not go any higher. Ah, you can stay in your seat. Hi guys, welcome to another video. As you can see, we're at our test station again. Today we're gonna to test spear steel, how much force it needs to create a bend in seven mil. I've also got two other samples of the seven mil, one with just a barb hole through right in the middle and another with a notch. For obvious reasons, both of those remove material and will cause a weakness. I'm gonna pull the barb hole spear side on to that to see how much force it takes to bend it compared to a straight wire with no holes or notches. Then I'm gonna pull the notches as well in two different directions. We've got three samples of each. We're gonna pull it out of them and just see how much loss is there in the wire by cutting a notch. Obviously, a fin spear should be way stronger than a steel that has parts of it missing, being cut a notch or a hole. Let's do the testing. So here we have our ram fully extended. We're gonna pull on it against a shackle, against a support that's equidistant support. So every one will be pulled in exactly the same zone, giving us a force reading in kgs, exactly how much will make that spear create a set. Um, sure, once we pull on the spears with notches or holes, it should actually break there and not just bend. Well, I actually don't know. We're gonna try that now and see what happens. I'm gonna keep getting a bit of pressure and then centralize that. And probably self-centered anyway. So there we're at 27 kgs. Let's keep pulling. That's 160. You can see it's deformed quite a lot. I'm gonna now release that and see if it's taken any set. Nothing. Let's take it up to 200. That's 200, quite a lot of flex. Let's see what happens when we release it. Hard to tell, no, still perfectly straight. Well, that's 200 kilos, that's equivalent of two people standing at that point. Obviously, the further away, this is not an exact representation of how strong the steel is, but it gives you an idea, 200 kilos in that zone, that piece of wire is still straight. That's just our base material that we use, perfectly straight, high tensile steel. Now let's test the barb hole one. Let's see if that can take 200 kilos. We'll just keep pushing it up until we have a fracture. I'd be very surprised if it can take 200 kilos. We're gonna pull it at the worst possible location, which is directly on that barb hole. We'll be doing it with the barb hole perpendicular to everything. We will then turn it for the next one to test when we're ready. Let me get some tension. Now we'll recenter it. So you can clearly see the barb hole there. Slide it up it's in the right groove. Let's give it some force. Okay, I need some safety glasses. This may break. This spring steel is going to shoot all over the place. So the previous one had no holes or notches. If anything, it would have just bent. It wouldn't snap. This steel is not brittle. It will just bend in zones where it doesn't have a modification to it. I put safety glasses on just in case. If this does fracture, these could get airborne. It is spring steel wire. We're now at 16 kilos, just the start load. Let me take it up. I don't know if it'll fracture or kink. There's over 200. Let me straighten that. That's impressive. Ah, it has taken, I think, a very small set. You can hardly see it, but there's an ever so slight bow there didn't break but it did bend obviously if that was a barb hole now you would be shooting inaccurately that took 200 kilos to create the set the previous one without a hole that did remain straight 
at 200 kilos. I'm not even going to bother to pull it in any other direction. That was the worst possible direction to pull it in. It still handled 200. Let's do the same now. I doubt we'll get to 200 with this. Again, I've never done this experiment before. This is just something guys have been asking about. Let's give it a little bit of load. Now I'm going to pull it down to just under the notch. So we're now hauling on the worst possible place in the worst possible direction, exactly where it should create a kink. I'm just going to take it up to 100. There we go, at 100. I would think that's taken a set. Nothing. <laughs> that's impressive. Let's give it 150 and see what happens. As you saw there, 100 was not a problem. That he's starting to give, definitely was holding there. You can clearly see that is now king. So nearly 100 kilo, it's still fine. Above that starts to go. So there you can clearly see there is a kink. That was about 144 before it started to create a set that's still pretty good and as you can see it's a fair amount of leverage this is very similar to what you would be pulling on the back of the spear if this is in a fish and you hauling on that in that direction that will give you 140 kilos of tension that's pretty much maximum to what mono uh, in fact it's above what mono would be mono brake strain mono is about 120, 100 to 120 is what mono would break at, your two millimeter mono. Now, that's roughly about how far your rear notch would be. But if you had the second notch there or on a third notch there, all of that will give you so much more leverage against it. And that would mean that would reduce. So there, which is the back notch is about 140, I need to set up another jig where I can load where a second notch would be in relation to all of this. And that will cause it to bend easier. It's all about the way it's loaded. I'm gonna try and notch one this time in the other direction. Let's take it to 140. So we're now pulling from the underside. In fact, that might even be the worst way to pull it. Obviously, every notch is cut by hand. The depth of the notch will create a difference. If it's barely in or not deep enough, it's likely your wishbone line is going to jump out when you load it. If it's too deep, of course, it weakens it. The wishbone will hold better, but there will be less material and therefore weaker. Take it to 100 and check it. There we go, just over 100. At 100, nothing. We'll pull in the same direction again. Again, we're pulling on the underside now. Once it starts to deflect, the actual pressure will not go any higher. Ah, I think it's taking a set. And there she snapped. Again, 140 kilos. That's quite a force. The Shear, obviously, because of the notch, enabled that to fracture. Whereas the previous one, bending the other way, didn't fracture. I'm going to do another one. This time we're going to pull side on. You can see it's just a standard notch. Material's been removed exactly the same. So now we're set. There's 13 kilos of preload. We're now 90 degrees to that notch. Let's see what happens. This is obviously a direction that the spear is really going to take stress, although a big fish thrashing in a cave can do this. There's a hundred. Take this load off. No deformity. Load it back the same. So at a hundred, it didn't break. So side on. It takes a greater force. 
There's 150. Let me back it off and see if we got any bend. Hard to tell in the jig. I would say ever so slight, but let's take it further. There we have 30 kilos preload. Got to 150 last time. Let's take it up to that and beyond. The chances are it will fracture. Here we go. 160, 70. There. Gave it just over 180. So that showed you that deformation occurring. 180 kilos side on to that point. That can happen. A big fish in a cave jams everything up, forces it over. It's all about leverage. The more notches you have, the weaker you're making the steel. So it's super important to be aware of that. But obviously, welded fins do have a higher cost implication, but you have a way stronger steel spear. I hope you enjoyed that video. Explained a bit on just how our steel performs and how much load it can take before it deforms. But it is a weak point. It will break at that point at some stage if a fish stresses it too much. If you fire this through the fish's head and you're hauling on this side, that's how much load it can take before it will deform or bend. That same fish could take that spear into the sand and rub it on the sand or the reef. That's a fairly common occurrence. The guy shoots a fish, next thing he comes back with just a piece of his spear. That's that fish taking it into the reef and bending it at that point. If your spear line hole is ahead of that and that gets broken off, you're still connected. But there are complications and issues why guys prefer the line at the back opposed to ahead of the notch. Either or, it is possible to make them and majority, vast majority, still prefer the line at the back for reasons we have explained in a previous video. We'll show you that link. Hope you enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next.